And as a point of fact, the capacity is not yet fully utilized. That's the fact. Thank you, Minister. The clearly mistaken impression that we were here to talk about the TMX pipeline, a pipeline which we got built, and the Conservative government didn't. It's very fair that a didn't. minister comes to committee. And since we're, we're talking about jobs, I'm glad to point like, out 35,000 jobs were created during the building of the pipeline. Okay, and well, that's great. How many jobs will be lost? Hey, gang, what's up? Just Aaron here, Canadian Looney. We have Christia Freeland testifying in front of committee. We usually don't get one minister in a committee, let alone two. She brought her little, you know, pony boy lapdog, John Wilkinson, who's the Minister of Natural Resources. You know this guy. Eight out of ten families get more money back in the family rebate. Yeah, it's bullshit, right? So he's part of the liberal cult, drank too much Kool-Aid. Christia obviously did. She seems to have lipstick on. It only costs $6,000 a month to get lipstick on that pig. It's gross. We've got Shannon Stubbs and Jaws Raj Halan as well. They're MPs from Alberta, super. They don't like these ministers and they have pertinent questions to ask, looking for answers for Canadians as the opposition is supposed to do. Freeland and Wilkinson are losers. They're part of the liberal cult. It's an issue. Anyhow, we're gonna get into the committee video. Let's take a peek. Let's take a look and a listen. They're hard to watch, but Canadians need to see what's going on. So let's take a look. Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. <laughs> oh yeah. Go to our first round of questions. Uh, we'll start with Ms. Stubbs for six minutes. The floor is yours. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Minister Freeland and Minister Wilkinson for being here today. Of course, Conservatives always supported the nation building uh, Trans Mountain Expansion Pipeline undeniably in federal jurisdiction. Uh, what we advocated, though, was for the federal government to assert federal jurisdiction and the rule of law in order to ensure the private sector proponent could get that pipeline built on their dime and on their schedule. Um, Mr. Freeland, uh, do you agree with Stats Can from last Thursday's report that if Canada didn't have uh, contributions from oil and gas right now, uh, that Canada would be in a recession? The strength of the Canadian economy today in the and in the past um, is very much built on our oil and gas sector. Um, I absolutely recognize the value that it brings in terms of jobs, in terms of revenues, in terms of our trade balance. So the two things that that report said um, that are keeping Canada's econo economy going is public sector spending and oil and gas production. The problem is that because your government has killed two other potential export pipelines in Northern Gateway and Energy East, and only now um, is getting the Trans Mountain expansion uh, built and starting to operate as a $34 billion liability on taxpayers, pipeline capacity is actually full, which will automatically cut production, Canadian energy, businesses, jobs, uh, and opportunities. So based on that, how can um, the Liberals and your anti-energy, anti-private sector um, colleagues possibly justify imposing an oil and gas cap on Canada, a job-killing oil and gas cap on Canada? I'm going to start answering the question, and uh, Minister Wilkinson may want to offer some thoughts. Um, look, I do think that in the areas where it's possible for everyone in this committee and everyone in our house to agree, we should. And I think that it is really meaningful and actually great that we have completed a nation building project that both Rachel Notley and Danielle Smith support. That is a good thing for Canada. Um, I also absolutely agree as does any, well, as do all economists that oil and gas is an important part of Canada's economy. Mr. Having, ha hang on, hang on. Having said that, My question was it is, it, having Mr. said Green. that, it is, absolutely um, inappropriate for conservatives to criticize our government when it comes to pipelines. We got a pipeline built to Tidewater. Conservatives did not. That is the reality. This is a nation-building project. I think you 
there was in, in the Calgary Herald, uh, Lena, there, in the Calgary the Herald, there was so a senior Alberta question. energy does leader talked about this as a nation States building project. Biggest and it was our government that got it because built. of your lack of getting pipelines done. Does it self impose an oil and gas, a job killing oil and gas cap on itself? The United States does it. The key question here is who got a pipeline built and who didn't? So and the, the answer, answer is, is that our United government States built. Does it's not. a nation How building project that is contributing meaningfully to our national prosperity and it? to good wages for Canadian workers. I I'm think that that is a record emissions I am cap. proud to stand on. Okay. I'm happy to answer the, the question um, ask, about the emissions cap. I Mr. mean, uh, Thanks the, for your the emissions offer. cap has not actually been announced uh, to date, but it is both an important part of reducing carbon emissions in line with uh, what Minister science Wilkinson, tells us we must. Um, can I ask you to hold one sec? We have a point of order. Go ahead, Mr. Falcon, a point of order. Uh, uh, Member Stubbs specifically asked a question to Minister Freeland. And I think it would only be appropriate and uh, proper for Minister Freeland to answer the question and not Minister Wilkinson. I would say that the emissions cap actually falls within my um, area of authority. And sorry, Minister, uh, sorry, sorry uh, Mr. Falk, I'm going to ask you to hold a sec. Um, to address your point of order, um, procedurally, um, a question was asked to Minister Freeland, but the emissions <coughs> cap does fall under Minister Wilkinson's uh, mandate and jurisdiction. So. Um, if you want a specific question on that, I think that is appropriate for Minister Wilkinson to answer. But, uh, you know, I will go back to Ms. Stubbs because it is her time to ask the questions. But I would allow, this is a good reminder for committee members, you ask a question, allow the ministers to answer so they can give a fulsome answer to the question asked. Um, so, Ms. Stubbs, I'm going to go back to you. And if you'd like to direct that question. Thanks, over Chair, and I certainly will when the question is actually answered. So, Minister Wilkinson, can you confirm whether or not Canada's biggest competitor and customer, the United States, whether the OPEC producers, Canada's biggest competitors in hostile regimes, whether Mexico, Canada's North American competitor, whether Norway, whether European countries, whether countries in South Africa or South America impose on themselves a job killing oil and gas emissions cap? Can you confirm? Well, it, it is a cap that is actually intended to drive employment in, uh, in oil and gas producing areas in this country. There will be thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs created because of the initiatives around carbon capture and sequestration, the implementation of methane reductions. It will strengthen the long-term competitiveness of the industry, which uh, with the world is moving towards lower carbon, irrespective of what the UCP says, which uh, on the weekend has decided that, carbon, uh, that climate change is not uh, an issue anymore somehow. Um, it is something that actually will help us to reduce emissions. No sector gets a pass, but it also is going to strengthen the competitiveness and create jobs and economic opportunity in Alberta, it, Saskatchewan, it, British Columbia, and Newfoundland and Labrador. And in truth, European countries are all backing <clears throat> away, actually, from these policies because they're causing unreliable and too expensive. But that's actually not like true. Energy, power, that's not fuel. true. Um, it is absolutely It is true not true. If you actually is, watch what the rest of the country is doing. It, it is not true. And the truth is that there is no other oil and gas producing country on you Earth. You just talked about Europe. Europe is actually doubling on down itself. on the energy transition because Germany it's both an energy security coal, and, coal, and a climate issue. And Sweden has announced a suspension of, of order, all sir. activities okay, towards um, their goal. Ms. Stubbs, I'll ask you to hold. We have a point of order. Go ahead. Uh, just Gordon. for the sake of translators, we yeah. have two people, uh, Minister and uh, the, the, the person who's asking the question, Ms. Stop, talking of each other. <laughs> I'm just, uh, aside from you, allowing the, you know, the minister to respond or... The question to be finished is, I'm worried about the translators. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Jawari. It's a very good point uh, and a point of order that you've raised. Uh, colleagues uh, speaking over each other does not make the jobs of our interpreters any easier. It makes it much more difficult. So uh, I'll address you, sir, in uh, one second. So I would ask um, uh, Ms. Stubbs, uh, with your time, to ask the question, but also allow the minister to have time to answer the question um, you know, reasonably in a reasonable amount of time. Um, and, I'm, and I hope that addresses your concern and the concerns of this committee member as well. Uh, Mr. Howland, on a point of order. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I agree with my colleague, Mr. Jari, about showing respect for our interpreters, but I hope, Chair, that you would see in, this, in the last exchange, Ms. Stubbs actually had not gotten to her question, and it was the minister that interrupted her, and I would also ask the minister to please respect the uh, interpreters and let Ms. Stubbs finish before he Thank attempts you. to answer the question. Thank you, Mr. Hallen, um, for providing that and agreeing with Mr. Jawari. I just will say that um, uh, Mr. Wil Minister Wilkinson 
was interrupted as well through providing his answer, so it, it goes several ways. I would ask all colleagues to ask and allow an answer from the minister. Uh, I think we can set the ground rules that we can give them enough time to make sure they can give a fulsome answer to the very important questions they're asking. you got about 20 seconds left, so I'm going to turn it back over to you. You can get a quick question in if you like, and um, we can move forward. Thank you. The reality is none of those, none of those um, countries are imposing a job-killing oil and gas emissions cap on themselves because they know it will hurt their people and their economies. And your collective failures after nine years on pipelines have maxed out pipeline capacity. Those combined will cut production, oil and gas production, jobs, businesses, and money from Canada, no matter what you say. And um, that is actually the truth about what is occurring here. And um, you do owe it to Canadians, especially the small and medium-sized producers, operators, Indigenous communities and, co and contractors, who all together, including with Chambers of Commerce and other private sector proponents, are saying your emissions are cap will damage Canada time. catastrophically. Um, and Minister, uh, we are at time, but I can give you, if you have a, a five-second answer there, you can provide to that 10 seconds. Go ahead. I didn't ask Go ahead, if you'd like to provide a short okay. short answer. The so fact is, the our government built a pipeline to Tidewater. The Conservatives failed to do so. And as a point of fact, the capacity is not yet fully utilized. That's the fact. Thank you, Minister. And we're still on round number one. We're going to get to Jaws Raj Halan. He's got many questions for these trashy pieces of shit ministers. Let's take a listen to what Jaws Raj has to ask in the answers these phony Liberals do not give. They're brutal to watch. Uh, we'll now go to Mr. Helen for five minutes. You have five minutes, sir. The floor is yours. Thanks, Chair. Uh, Minister Fleen, how many jobs, Canadian jobs, will be lost with your job-killing uh, oil and gas cap? Um, I was under the clearly mistaken impression that we were here to talk about the TMX pipeline, a pipeline which we got built, and the Conservative government didn't. It's very fair that a didn't. minister comes to committee. And since we're, we're talking sharing, about jobs, I'm glad to point like, out 35,000 jobs were created during the building of the pipeline, okay, and well, that's great. How many jobs will be lost with the emissions cap? I just need the number, Minister. There will be tens of thousands of jobs created as a result of the emissions cap. If you just I look just at need a number. the, the many, Shell Polaris project, the created? Strathcona project, the uh, the Pathways project that we all hope will move ahead, all the jobs that were created through the implementation of methane reduction what's, technologies, what's the number? this is an enormous opportunity that will create tens of thousands of tens jobs of in thousands. Alberta. You what's see it with Lindy, you see it with their products, Minister, you see it with Dow and Minister, the first net the zero number? petrochemical facility, you see it with the Imperial Biofuel facility. Minister, I just My goodness, I mean, go and have a look at what's happening I just on the ground. Need a if you don't have the number, just say so. <laughs> tens of thousands. <laughs> okay. So you're saying tens of thousands of jobs will be created. Deloitte has estimated that 110,000 jobs will be lost in Canada due to your job-killing oil and gas cap. Mm -hmm. Are you confirming today that tens of thousands of jobs will be more than 110,000 jobs that, you've, that you're going to drive away from Canada? Yes or no? I just need a yes or no. Look, um, the oil and gas cap is intended to incent economic activity and the long-term competitiveness of the oil and gas sector while doing what we need to do to uh, address the climate issue. It is so very I'll disturbing that no, for me that the Conservative of Party time, of Canada so I'll, I'll to increasingly on. seems to so be a group of climate deniers. Minister, At the end of the day, you Minister, have to actually address that answer. issue and address it in a manner that's going to create chair, economic opportunity. Hey, your, your questions are ridiculous. At the end of the day, point of order, we have a missteps. We got a point of order. You know what? Uh, once again, colleagues. And I wouldn't deign to um, Ms. Dubs, lecture anyone. About I, I want to answer your point of order. If I could ask you to just pause, thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, colleagues, once again, um, question and allow time for an answer. Um, just so, uh, Ms. Allen, you have time to ask your question, and the minister has time to provide a fulsome answer to your question. So if we can okay, I'll just, I'll well, work within those pr parameters, Fair I think everything goes I'll move smooth. on because Go the ahead. minister obviously with his non-answer, proves that he admits that the jobs will not be recovered, the ones that he's going to lose with this emissions cap. So I'll move on. And I think it's important to note that it's my constituents and Albertans who are going to be impacted the most with this oil and gas cap that they know how many jobs will be lost because most of them will be out of work in that field because of you. Minister Freeland, you preside over one of the worst GDP per capita growth since the Great Depression. Can you... Confirm that you've done an impact assessment that the, what this oil and gas cap 
will do to your deficit? Okay, there are so many untrue statements embedded in what you've said. So I'm going to have to go after them one I ju- by one. I just one. want an answer to my question. Do, have you done an uh, impact assessment? I, I actually wasn't given a chance GDP to answer. On GDP and GDP per capita growth. I just need that answer. I didn't so, ask for anything uh, else. Once again, uh, Mr. Allen, you've asked your question. I want to give the minister an opportunity to answer your question. Minister Freeland, please go ahead and provide an answer. It is absolutely appropriate for me to make clear the falsehoods embedded in your question. It is not okay for me to just drive by those. So I'm going to go through them systematically. Just the GDP per capita, is it not the worst? If, if that was the, the, only, if that was the only question you wanted to ask, you didn't need to offer all of the false fluff to begin with. So let me go it, after the fluff. It would be nice for you so to answer so let me we go. could move on. So, Mr. Allen... Uh, and Ms. Freeland, if you could get direct and um, answer the questions uh, that he's asked and provide a provide an answer. I'll, I'll, I'll be direct. Thank you, Chair. Well, no, so no, no, no. Hold on, Mr. Howland. I want to give Minister Freeland a time to answer the question. So, uh, Minister Freeland, briefly provide an answer briefly, to the question. I, I simply can't let the falsehood stand. So, first of all, you began by saying something untrue about what my colleague, Minister Wilkinson, said. Minister Wilkinson was very clear that we believe that our policies are both bringing down emissions and bringing good jobs to Canada Which, and which is not true. Okay, we Minister, believe since you're we not can gonna answer, and must do I have about a minute left. In terms I would, I'd of like GDP, since we're Minister, here to dollar, talk about... No, you didn't actually... You didn't order, you didn't actually so we have a point of order, uh, Minister Freeland, and I know you're going to the GDP... Um, answer, but I have a point of order from Mr. Yeah, Cousin. we just note the bizarre spectacle of extremely powerful elite ministers um, of the government of Canada, of a G7 country, so, uh, constantly, Cubs, that's not a point constantly of order. constantly shutting down and cutting off both women member of parliaments and um, an ethnically diverse so, uh, member um, of parliament. So here, perhaps these guys I, who guess, love to play like, identity okay, politics so, just answer the question. Colleagues, uh, first of all, um, Minister yeah. Freeland is also a strong woman in the government who's here answering questions. Yeah, I certainly don't let's think she has not, a with the Let's heat. not target members based on their gender or their ethnicity. Um, I'll ask everybody to, let's everybody just uh, take a deep breath and tone down a notch. So we can get back to the issue at hand today. That's the Trans Chair, Mountain Pipeline expansion. You do, Mr. Helen, have time. So I like have it on hold, on next but I do have, add a point of order I have right. to address. Like Minister Freeland, back. a brief... I, I want to give you a chance to answer on the GDP brief, and I'm going to go back to you, Mr. Hallon, uh, on the GDP answer you're just about to give, and then uh, we'll go back to you. Okay, TMX, which we're supposed to be here to talk about, is adding 0.25% to Canada's GDP. That is important. In the G7, Canada will have the second strongest GDP growth this year, and the IMF forecasts that we will have the strongest GDP growth next year, and it looks like we're achieving a soft landing after the greatest recession since the Great Depression. Minister, uh, just to correct your falsehood, you said 0.25% in GDP. In fact, your your gas cap, oil and gas cap, is going to take a 1% hit to our GDP, according to Deloitte. You can shake your head all you want, Minister Wilkinson, but that's the truth. Now, the dollar is trading at $72 right now. In your budget, you had projected WTI would be at $78. Currently, it's at $71. In the PBO recently said you will blow through your your projected budget by seven billion dollars, which we know because either you can't do math or you can't manage or both. Now, can you please confirm just the number? How so time much is, worse with the, Mr. Allen, will the deficit time, be? Time is up, and a, a brief answer, please. What will the deficit be? Mr. Helen's question was incoherent, and it wasn't clear. He said the dollar is trading at. I think he meant oil. But he he, he mushed up his words in his minister. word salad, so it's really impossible to answer a question which is so you don't want to incoherent answer, you know and incoherent. Because you know how bad the answer will be. Thank okay. You. How difficult is it to answer a question, ministers? Give me an give me a break. It's so hard. Christia Freeland, you got to go. John Wilkinson, I don't care where you go. Get the hell out of here, man. You're a loser. These lying liberal. Cult members are a disaster. These guys are like El Capitans in Trudeau's cult. So whacked. Anyway, my name is Aaron. Like, subscribe, share, get notified, all those fun things. 
We'll be back with more videos. Thank you very much for watching this one. They, they frustrate me from time to time. There's no doubt about that. They are trash guys and they're lying straight to my fellow Canadians every day, all day. It's all they do. Divide, distract, lie, whatever they need to do to keep Trudeau as their boss. What a weird situation we have here in Canada, guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. We'll be back with more. So like, share, subscribe, and get notified. Come and watch one of the live shows. We'll catch you next time. Everyone has an opinion about Canadian federal politics. Oh, yeah.